Raise your hand if you're going to vote for wet. Raise your hand if you're going to vote for dry hair. Raise your hand if you're going to vote for damp hair. Okay, by the way, guys, from now on, if I vote, vote with me. Okay, this is a general rule. Yeah, when we're cutting guys' hair, a lot of the time, 99 times out of 100, when a guy comes into a salon, clinic, or shop to present themselves for a men's haircut, they bring something with them. What do they bring? And what does a guy bring with him most of the time? Hat head. He's got a ball cap on. He's got that crimp running around his head. 72 hours wearing a boy, you know, a, a baseball hat. You can't taper hat head. Consultation, shampoo, towel dry, back to the chair. The guy that doesn't bring you hat head, what does he bring you? Half a tube of stuff. Yeah, you can't taper this guy either. Conver conversation, consultation, shampoo, towel dry, back to the chair. Moisture in the hair provides better sectioning, tension, and distribution. It also provides, especially with tapering and clipper over comb, cowlicks, growth patterns, and directions will lay where they want to lay, go where they want to go, and do what they want to do. We get what we call a little better lay of the land. The hair behaves better with a little bit of moisture in it. Also, as a clipper cutter, halfway through a haircut, I have hair clippings on both sides of my glasses. I'm covered in the stuff. There's an element of safety for us because hair that is damp, hair that contains moisture, contains weight. Damp clippings fall to the floor. Dry clippings will spray back at you. The exception to this is heavily textured hair. On a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being totally stick-straight porcupine fur, and 10 being heavily kinky, curly, ethnic textured hair, on a scale of 1 to 10, anything with a texture level of 7 or straighter will be cut damp. Anything with a texture level of 7 or greater, kinkier and curlier than 7, gets cut dry. Do not dampen textured hair when you work with a clipper. It's just not going to flow right, and it's not going to cut right. Does that make sense? Yes. All right, what is your name? Jessica. Jessica, nice to meet you, Jessica. Switch sides with me over here. Okay. Jessica, are you right-handed? Yes. Thank God. Anybody a lefty? <laughs> Lefties, raise your hand. Lefties, get a refund. Thanks. Have a great day. Bye. <laughs> uh, no, you know what? Cosmetology and barber education is traditionally shared right-handed. I am right-handed. I'm demonstrating this right-handed. From time to time, now that we know we have a couple of challenged folks in the room, I will share a little bit of lefty information. <laughs> Give me your right hand. Okay. Turn it over. Clipper backwards in your hand. Cord comes out between your thumb and fork. Cool nails. Dang it. <laughs> got a Halloween theme going on there. That's awesome. Um, cord comes out between your thumb and forefinger. Have you put that on Pinterest yet? No. Take a picture of your hand. Put it on Pinterest. You guys go on Pinterest? Yeah. Pinterest is kind of cool because Pinterest is literally becoming the social sharing site of the beauty industry. Because it's very imagery. We're all about pictures of hair. And by the way, the nail companies have really gotten behind Pinterest big time. The hair companies are second behind the nail companies. People are posting some of the coolest, and I'm not even in the nail end of the business, but I, I, I have a great deal of respect for the talent, the skills, and the abilities of all of the people that do the things we do in our business. Pinterest is like wildly loaded with nails. Take a picture of that, put it on Pinterest, because those are cool. Who did those? Excellent. All right, cord coming out between your thumb and forefinger. Blade sits back at the heel of your hand. Open your two bottom fingers, and insert a comb with a handle on it, close it up around it. Look at your hand. Look at your hand. Don't look at me. Look at your look hand. At look at your hand. Okay. Are you good with it? Yes, exactly. Now, there's a guide right here. If you, made, if you were paying attention, I created a guide. I combed it up. Then I split the guide. So there's a little bit of guide running all the way around here. On this side here, what I want you to do is you're going to pick up a section, knowing that you'll have at least pick up something like this. Because when you pick this up, you're going to have guide over here. And boom, you can match it. All right? That's what I want you to do. I want you to comb it up, hold it up, cut it off. Don't shut the clipper off. Don't set the clipper down. And don't move the comb over there. Just keep everything right here. You're going to come in. You're going to take that vertical section. You're going to comb it up. You're going to hold it up. You're going to look at that. You're going to boom. All right. Do it. While you're doing it, explain it. Talk about it and be funny. I'm going to be really funny right now, and I'm going to hold this up. Hey, somebody laugh. <laughs> comb it up. Hold it up. Straight to the ceiling. Look at it and cut it off. That's awesome. Do it. Do it. That's perpendicular. Now, wait, slow down. All right, I right, come up another section. This time, slow it down. It turtles you down. All right, hold it up. Hold it up. Look for the guy. Now, you cut perpendicular. You turn the blade 90 degrees, and you came in that way using a small section of the blade. Perpendicular cutting concentrates all the blade's power in a little. If this is the whole blade, you're only using that much of it. You got all the power in two or three teeth. Do it. Now I want you to call up another section. You can either move forwards or backwards. Call up another section. I want you to cut parallel. In parallel cutting, you use all the teeth of the blade all at once. You load the whole blade. The difference is, come from the front. Okay. There you go. Exactly. The difference is, 
If you are a member of the Windy Clipper Club, is there anybody here that's a member of the Windy Clipper Club? How would you know you're a member of the Wimpy Clipper Club? You got a Wimpy Clipper. How do you know? It'll tell you. Have you ever asked a Wimpy Clipper to cut something it can't cut? What does it say to you? It says it can't. Yeah, it'll tell you it can't cut that back. A powerful clipper, you can load the whole blade with a big fat section of hair. If you've got a Wimpy Clipper, parallel gives you a little more power. The advantage of parallel cutting, especially in cutting men's hair, is one of the objects of the game with men's hair is to create shapes that are strong, square, lean, and masculine. When you come in parallel, when you come in this way and come in parallel like that, you get very square, very blunt lines. When you come in perpendicular, you could hypothetically curve your fingers and cut a more curved linear, like you're trying to 90, 90, 90 the whole way out the head. Yeah. Okay, do one more section, either perpendicular or parallel, whichever one gets you excited. Talk about it while you're doing it. I'm over here. Oh, Are we good with that? How does it work? Great. Like it? Yeah. Kind of cool? Yeah. All right, how about a round of applause for Jessica? Yeah. Hand me that over here. That's my clipper, my comb, that's your comb. So thank thank you. you. All right, thank you very much for coming up here and doing that. All right, so we've got shear style cutting for perimeters for solid or graduated shapes. We've got backhand interior layering for layered shapes. As we saw from the demo, comb it up, hold it up, and cut it off. That was perpendicular, or comb it up, hold it up, cut it off. That was parallel. Now, hold up, a little bonus technique now. And by the way, I'm a right-handed cutter. I was cutting the client's right-hand side, two tools held together in my right hand. Comb it up, hold it up, cut it off. If you were a lefty, you'd have been on the other side here with a clipper and comb in the opposite hand. You'd be combing up on this side of the head, comb it up, hold it up, look for the guide, and cut it off. Everything's the same you would have done the other side of the head. When we get around to the other side, things change. Watch carefully here. As a right-handed cutter cutting the client's right side, it was comb it up, hold it up, cut it off, comb it up, hold it up, cut it off. To cut the client's left side as a right-handed hair cutter, you'd have to come over the top like this. It doesn't work. My elbow's up, my back is twisted, shoulder's jacked up. This doesn't work real well. Same thing as a left-handed cutter trying to cut the right side. Your right side is your easy side, your left side is tougher. As a right-handed hair cutter, in order to cut the client's left side, I need to make two changes to the situation I have here. Here are the two changes. Change number one, as a right-handed hair cutter cutting the client's right side, I stood behind my client. I was able to comb hair up, hold it up, and cut it off. Comb it up, hold it up, and cut it off. To cut the other side of the head, a right-handed hair cutter cutting the left side, change number one is I turn the chair. Previously, I stood behind my client and I worked from the hairline back. Now I will turn the chair, I will stand in front of my client. Since a real client has legs in a lap and you can't stand in front of your client, ladies, this could be good for tipping, however, <laughs> the answer is you stand to the side of the client over here, legs in the lap are over there, turn their head. Their legs in their lap are here, now you are functionally standing in front of the client. Change number one is 180 the chair. Change number two is 180 the comb. See the hand in the comb in the clipper? Look at the hand in the comb in the clipper. Turn the comb. Turning the comb. Originally the teeth were facing away from me. Then I turned the comb. The teeth are facing towards me. By turning the teeth towards me, I can now come in on this side of the head. Oh. Comb it up. Hold it up. Cut it off. Okay. Comb it up. Hold it up. Cut it off. By sense. turning the chair and turning the comb, I can work through the opposite <coughs> side of the head. Questions? Oh, Comments? Yeah. Anybody? Anything? We had perpendicular, and we have parallel. Ah, now, yes? Did anybody teach you this? Somebody taught me this. I didn't make this up. Yeah, absolutely. That's the way the business works. Somebody teaches it to me. I share it with you. It's your job to share it with somebody else. Absolutely. Now, everybody hold up the hand that contains the tiny little V-shaped scars from point cutting. <laughs> Hold them up. Let's see them. I always look to see if anybody holds up both hands. <laughs> All right. Why do we point cut? Texture. Yeah, there's that word again. Do we like to point cut? We love to point cut. Texture, 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 texture. However, if you're serious about point cutting and you really want to point cut and you want to do great point cutting, but you really kind of like your fingers and would rather you didn't cut them up like that, you know, Somebody should buy, you know, buy stock in Johnson & Johnson Band-Aids or something because, boy, you're going to be making some money over the next couple of years. <laughs> you want to point cut? Let's point cut. Let's point cut with our clipper. 
it looks like this. I'm going to take my clipper in my backhand position with my comb held in my two fingers like this. I'm going to take sections of hair. Traditional perpendicular and parallel backhand cutting like we've already seen is what we call direct cutting. We comb up a piece of hair. We make a length decision. I want to make that shorter. I want to make it that much shorter. I've made it shorter. That is direct cutting. Point cutting is a texture technique. It looks like this. We're going to take that same section of hair and say, I like the length, but I want to break it up a little bit. I like the length on that, but I want to break it up a little bit. So we do this. We comb it up, we hold it up, and we point cut. We can come out near the ends of the hair. If we wish to create just a little bit of end tapering or movement in the hair, set the length that we like, come back in, come up to the ends, and point cut. Doesn't get it any shorter, but breaks it up. If we want to hang back a little further, we want to go and dig a little bit deeper, we can take a section of hair, we can comb it up, we can hold it up, and make our length decision first. Yeah, I kind of like that. Okay, fine. But I want to really break it up. Hang out further south. I call that fanning it out. Bend your fingers like that, and I can now come in and point cut very deep with my clipper. Won't hurt me, won't cut my fingers, gives me awesome texture, fast, furious, fun, and exciting with a clipper. Who wants to try it? Let's go. What's that? How do you have your clippers adjusted? you're cutting against your finger, the question was how is the clipper adjusted? With our shear style cutting technique or our backhand interior layering technique, anytime you're cutting clipper over finger, we talked earlier about clipper over comb. Anytime you're cutting clipper over finger, you want that lever in the close, closed, or triple zero position. Push it all the way up and back so you're cutting as close to the ends of the blade as possible. What is your name? Jasmine. Jasmine, nice to meet you, Jasmine. Switch sides with me over here. All right, Jasmine, we need to lower the chair. I'm sorry, this one it is. All right, are you ready in it? Excellent, your hand. Backwards in your hand. Cord comes out between your thumb and forefinger. Would you get bored and quit? No. You only got one done up fancy. Oh. All right, I like that. <laughs> All right, two fingers. Open them up. Comb. All right. Take a section anywhere there. Comb it straight up in the air and do the basic cutting technique. Don't, don't get ahead of yourself. Okay. You don't need that much hair. Let's take just this. You got a whole mannequin there and that out. Let's just deal with that right there. Okay. Comb it up. Hold it up. Make it a little shorter. Comb it up. Hold it up, straight up, cut it off. Just cut it off. Cut it off. Okay. He's not tipping, he's not coming back, and he's not sending his friends. Now, re-grip that so you can get into oh. your fingers. By the way, that's a perfect example of the answer to the question. Why do we not cut past the second knuckle? No, it's not because you're going to cut yourself. Why do you not cut past the second knuckle? Tension, that's right. You get sunshine shining in between your second knuckle and the base of your fingers. The hair will buckle. Inconsistent tension. It's going to get longer right there. She couldn't grab it with the clipper for the exact same reason. Now, comb that section again, but this time, don't slide your fingers all the way to the design line. I want you to hang back about a centimeter. Okay? And point cut. Does it work? Do it again. Comb it up. Hold it up, hang back a little further this time, fan it out a little bit, bend your finger, there you go, and point cut. Just rock and roll. How about a round of applause for Jen? Great job, baby. All right. Don't get carried away. That's my man. Uh, here is your world famous Anna's clipper comb. Pink ones, dark hair, light combs, light hair, dark combs, can't cut what you can't see. Anna's introduced the pink ones. They make a donation for breast cancer research. That's a warm, fuzzy, lovely thing. I actually do some of that research myself. There you go. Thank you. Other questions or comments before we move on? How are we doing on timing? We're going to go till what? 11.30? Right? Yes, no? Maybe? Yeah. Okay. Just making sure. Let's pump up the chair. And let's get into some shorter hair. Let's take a look at clipper over comb. Let's get into some shorter hair clipper cutting. Why I cut mannequins. <laughs> What's that? Mr. Brad there. Yep, that's Mr. Brad. Gets a little abuse, but he's a good guy. Alright, clipper over comb. This is a clipper comb. It is a clipper comb because it's wider than the clipper. It allows us to cut clipper over comb. It's wider than the clipper. There's no lip or ridge where the teeth blend down into the spine. It's an even and consistent thickness from the base of the spine to the tip of the teeth. And it's got a handle on it. You hold up a quarter by the edges. 
a pretend make-believe quarter, hold it up by the edges, you put your thumb in the thumb notch like that, you tip the handle in and you roll your fingers down around it. That allows you to do this. That's called pitch and wiggle. That's my ability to make subtle changes in the attitude, angle, or position of the comb relative to the surface of the client's head to cut hair. That little motion like that. With your thumb on the back of the comb, that uses your whole wrist. That is a one-way ticket to a repetitive motion injury. I'm sure we've got an instructor here at this school that comes in occasionally with Velcro and nylon wrist braces on because they have carpal tunnel syndrome from 35 years worth of winding rollers and pumping scissors and cranking a round brush. Think about how you use your biomechanical parts, your arms, your knees, your hip, your back, your legs. You can add years on to the back end of a successful career by thinking smart about what you do on the front end of your career. You're young and you're going to live forever, right until it gets painful and it hurts. So proper finger position on the comb like this will make all the difference in the world. Handle up, nose down. Handle up, nose down. You hold the comb at an angle. If you are cutting clipper over comb, if the comb is held horizontally, where the hair sits in along the base of the spine, when you zip off that hair like that, it's going to leave a step ledge ridge or demarcation. Holding the comb at an angle will dramatically reduce the statistical probability of putting a demarcation in. And if you don't put the line in, you don't got to take the line out. There you go. Clipper over comb is done with a clipper comb. If you've ever done clipper over comb, anybody here tried to cut clipper over comb with a skinny little comb? Yeah. Half the size of the clipper blade. Anybody here ever slipped off the comb and bumped somebody in the back of the head with a running clipper? <laughs> Raise your hand if you've done it. I've done it. Raise your hand, put them up, be proud. Put that little pivot in the back of their head. It looks like a golf course, right? All right? Usually it's a really white guy with really dark hair. All the way down to the bottom like that. The technical term for that is called a plug. Raise your hand if you've done it. Put your hand up. Be proud. I've done it. Put your hand up if you've done it. Look around the room with the hands. Here's the deal, guys. If we got our hand up, we did it. Everybody whose hand is not up is either A, lying, or B, just hasn't done it yet. Yes. Educating cosmetology and barber professionals is like educating firefighters and police officers. We don't train for if. We train for when. Because, I know you've seen this bumper sticker, stuff happens. Last time I did it, just so you can feel good about it, last time I did it, slipped off the comb, and bumped somebody in the back of the head with a running clipper. It was live on stage at the International Beauty Show in New York City in front of 45,000 licensed cosmetology oh, professionals. Yeah. It's a great story. Here's how it happened. I got a guy in my chair. I'm cutting hair, clipper over comb. On the floor in a major international trade show. Next to our booth is a booth from a hair care product company from Spain. I don't remember the name of the company, but they were an imported hair care and hair color brand. They had brought in from Spain all their people, all their team, all their product. They brought in this monster sound system to pump out this thumping Latin music. And they brought with them from Spain 40 Spanish models. Stunning. Exotic. Half naked Spanish models <laughs> dancing to the music in the next booth. This was a great show. I'm on stage cutting hair. I got a guy in my chair and I'm cutting this guy's hair. And this guy was like a, a plumbing contractor with a convention center or something. And I'm cutting his hair. And in the next booth, half naked dancing women from the Spanish hair care product company are doing their thing. And he's doing this. Because <laughs> he wants to see the half naked dancing Spanish woman. What am I doing? I'm cutting his hair and what am I doing? Because I want to watch too. Alright? And we had like a rhythm going. I'm doing this and he's doing it. We're rocking. Things are great. I got a rhythm going. Everything's fine. Now, I don't know what happened over there. I didn't see it. But my best guess is whatever happened, it happened more than half naked. Because instead of just doing this, he wheeled all the way around to get a good look at it. So what did I do? I did the same thing. Oh my God. And I got him right back here. Always right behind the ear like that. Thumped him with a clipper. Light skin, dark hair, all the way down the bottom. Looks like it's glowing. It looks like neon. Now, as a salon industry professional, when you thump somebody in the back of the head with a running clipper, what's the next thing you do? Anybody know? No, you just turn the chair. <laughs> and you cut over here. <laughs> oh, that's not true. You cut over here. And you look at this in the mirror. All right? And you do something called praying to the hair god. It sounds like this. You ready? Sounds like this. Oh, God. I didn't do that, did I? 
<laughs> oh God, I'm gonna be able to blend that, aren't I? <laughs> then what do you do? You turn the chair again, and then you cut near it, and it's like this. Oh God! <laughs> and then what do you do? You turn the chair back, and it sounds like this. Hey Brad. I cut you a little shorter than we planned. <laughs> so we're going to go just a little bit shorter, okay? What's the most important thing happening between me and Brad? Honesty? No. <laughs> Communication? No. What's the most important thing happening between me and Brad at that point? A powerful selling technique called smile and nod. <coughs> hey, Brad? <laughs> I took you a little bit shorter than we were going to go, right? <laughs> We're just going to go a little bit shorter. Yeah. Uh, that's how we sell take-home hair care products. Hey, Brad, we cut the top of your hair shorter today so you can get that spiky look. This is the gel you need. It's $37 a bottle, and you need two of them, okay? <laughs> if you don't have to deliver bad news, deliver it with a smile. All right? What's the difference between the haircut Brad was going to have and the haircut Brad now has to have? It's a little short. It's a couple of weeks, yeah. I had somebody raise the hand in the class one time and said, Retail opportunity, I draw pencil. <laughs> I'm not so sure I can sell him the eyebrow pencil. I might have to give him the eyebrow pencil. Yeah, really. But yeah, we're going to communicate, we're going to be honest, we're going to blend it in, we're going to do what we can. For those of you that are a little less comfortable and confident with classic clipper over comb, my two recommendations. Number one, use that wide comb. That distance regulator and platform will set you up for success. For those of you that watch me clipper over comb, cutting like this and they're going, yeah, dude, sure, two world records, three world records, I believe you can do that. I can't do that. I'll give you one more extra little trick, and that is this. If you're going to cut clipper over comb and you want to build your level of comfort and confidence with the technique, cut clipper over comb with a number one guard on your clipper. A number one guard is an eighth of an inch long. It doesn't work with anything longer than a number one, because longer than a number one, the teeth get long and the hump gets high and the hair won't flow. But with a number one guard on your clipper, if you cut clipper over comb with a number one guard in place, notice it doesn't cut flush to the comb. It leaves some hair hanging out beyond the comb. It backs you up, it backs you off. It allows you to cut a little less aggressively and a little less progressively. It lets you work the surface down a little more slowly. If you slip off and you thump them with the clipper, at least you won't bottom him out. You've got a guard on there for some measure of protection. Dark hair, light combs, light hair, dark combs. You can't cut what you can't see. You have a choice. You can work hard. You see that? Or you can work smart. See that? Contrast plays a huge role here with clipper over comb cutting. Questions or comments on that? Anybody, anything? We've got two ways we can cut clipper over comb. We can do clipper over comb in what we call cross cutting. And we can do clipper over comb in what we call up cutting. The differences are this. Cross cutting looks like this. In cross cutting, we're holding the comb at an angle, and we're coming across the teeth 90 degrees or perpendicular to the teeth. I'm cross cutting like this. Cross cutting is more aggressive. Cross cutting is more direct. Think of cross cutting as roughing in the basic shape, getting the hair down to the basic shape we're going to work with. Up cutting, as the name implies, contrary to cross cutting, has us moving parallel to the teeth. Not straight up and down, because our comb is not horizontal. Our comb is at an angle, so up cutting would be parallel to the teeth, still at an angle. Watch the difference. Cross cutting looks like this. I'm coming across the teeth, perpendicular, and where hair hangs out of the comb, it is trapped in the comb and cut off. Look how nicely that blends up into that top length. That is cross cutting. Cross cutting is working across the comb. Up cutting, as the name implies, has me working parallel to the teeth this way. The difference between cross cutting and up cutting. While cross cutting is very aggressive and allows us to rough in the shape, up cutting is more of a finesse technique. Up cutting provides more of a polishing effect because in cross cutting, hair is trapped in the comb and it is cut off. With the guard on, it stays a little bit longer, but when the guard is off in the triple zero closer closed position, cross cutting cuts off everything hanging out of the comb. Conversely, the up cutting technique, when you come in with an up cutting technique like this, some of the hair is cut. Some of the hair is just pushed up out of the comb. Push, push, push. So it's cut, 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 push, cut, push. It slows you down, it backs you up, it backs you off. It's more of a finesse technique for smoothing and polishing the surface as opposed to the more direct technique 
that is cross-cutting. Does that make sense? Yes. Everybody understand the difference between the two. When you watch a good barber, and if you're serious about men's haircutting, you got to go on a field trip on a Wednesday morning when the senior citizen patrol is out there. Take your brother, take your son, take your boyfriend, take your uncle, take your daddy, take your grandpa. If you don't have a grandpa, go to a nursing home and borrow a grandpa. These guys need fresh air and sunshine, and they need haircuts. Take an old man to a barber shop and throw $10 down on the counter, sit in the waiting room with a magazine, peek over the top of the magazine, watch old men cut hair. Good men's haircutting is best learned standing one and a half feet behind the right shoulder of a good men's haircutter. Tell them who you are. Tell them why you're there. Most of these guys, they come from this magical place called the old country. I don't even know where that is. It's somewhere in Eastern Europe. They've been hanging out in the barbershop since they could stand up straight and hold a broom. And the hinge on their jaw is real loose and wiggly. Tell them who you are and why you're there. Once they start talking like me, they won't shut up. They'll share a lifetime of information with you if you let them. You'll see amazing things from these guys as you watch. But you'll notice that combination... You'll see them doing this. You'll see them going cross, 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 up, 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 cross, 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 up, 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 cross, 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 because they're using a combination of roughing it in and polishing it out as they work through a haircut clipper or a comb. Questions or comments? Anybody, anything? Yes? How much hair do you know to take off? How much hair do you know to take off? That's a great question. How do you know what to take How do you ever know what to take off? Follow your... Guide. How do you establish a guide for a classic tapered men's haircut? Great question. From where you're sitting, you will see none of this. Mm -hmm. Here's what you're going to do. <laughs> Sit down. What is your name? Amanda. Amanda. Sit down, Amanda. It's just you and me here. There's nobody else in the room with us. <laughs> right? Great question. How do you know how much to cut? You want to establish a guide. Your guide for classic clipper over comb is a panel in the back of the head. We use a technique called panel cutting. Your first section which you'll use to determine your guide length, is an area that's about an inch and a quarter wide, and it extends from south of the perimeter to north of the occipital bone. It's a box right here. You with me in that box right there? We're going to call that center back panel number one. It's approximately the size of the tooth area of my comb. We're going to cut panel number one. We're going to cut panel number one. We'll cut panel number one. There is no guide for panel number one. You're creating your guide. You've got to start somewhere. So you're going to start down low like this, and you're going to taper center back panel number one. Moving up from below, and up from below, and up from below. You're going to have your comb flat down at the bottom, and you're going to rock it out at the top. Now notice, how thick is this comb between my two fingers? How thick is that comb? Not very. I need a number. Give me a number. How thick is the comb? It's about an eighth of an inch. That's right. How thick is the spine from the bottom of the teeth to the back edge between my thumb and forefinger where the Andis family printed their name? About a half inch. Good answer. Now, keep that information with you if you would. Follow along with me. If I take my comb and I insert it into the hair and I lay the comb flat to the head and I zip off all the hair hanging out of the comb, how much hair will it leave behind? An eighth of an inch, the thickness of the comb. That's right. But if I insert the comb, tip it out, roll it back till the spine is perpendicular and I zip off all the hair hanging out of the comb, how much hair will it leave behind? A half. So in other words, flat leaves me an eighth. Perpendicular leaves me a half. Eighth, quarter, three-eighths, half. Eight, quarter, three eighths, half. Does anybody recognize the numbers? Eight, quarter, three eighths, half. Clipper guards. Clipper guards. This is your clipper guard. With clipper over comb, I took the guard off of here. I moved it over here. Based on my position up and down the head, where am I, and my degree of angle or pitch, down low I hold it flatter, up high I rock it out. And the secret is, do not cut anything off the head. Clipper over comb. Do not cut anything off the head until the top of the tips of the teeth are tipped out towards you. It's easy for me to say because I've said it.